episode of Cannabis Health Radio. I'm Ian Jessup. And I'm Corey Yelland. Having a brain aneurysm is bad enough, but when the police take away your medicine, in this case CBD, and charge you, then your health is in jeopardy. That's the dilemma facing our guest today. And joining us from Michigan to tell his story is John Roberts of the Michigan Cannabis Cancer Project. John, good of you to do this. Thanks very much. Thank you for having me. Now, take us back to the beginning of your story and tell us about your brain aneurysm. Uh, March of uh, 2015, I was at a restaurant and I had a brain aneurysm rupture. I felt it was a rather unique uh, sensation. And, uh, uh, I guess it was described as the worst headache that you'll ever have. Um, that's how, I mean, that's the analogy, that's the description of when, when, one, ha- when one ruptures. Um, I had bled out for approximately about a week. I was taken, rushed down to U of M Hospital where they uh, put a stint in. Um, and please forgive me if I. Stop or hesitate. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, after the surgery, you know, I discussed with the neurosurgeon and my family doctor about the long-term deficits or disabilities and what do I should I expect from now on. My surgeon, uh, neurosurgeon, explained that I most likely will be experiencing headaches for a long period of time. Uh, it's undetermined how long or if it, they will ever go away, and. You know, Western medicine, all they have to prescribe are opiates or Xanax for anxiety, which these side effects are the same of what I'm trying to alleviate, <laughs> headaches and uh, addiction. And uh, so we agreed upon, since I was uh, founder of the Can- uh, Cannabis Cancer Project and all this, uh, the word uh, that, that came out in regards to CBD and how effective CBD was in regards to inflammation, relieving pain, epilepsy, tremors. That was the course of treatment that was uh, decided upon. Fortunately, me being in the Cannabis Cancer Project, providing cannabis oil for about eight years to cancer patients, um, we've heard about the Stanley Brothers and their high CBD strain. We obtained one here called the Canatonic 4. I was able to make some oil out of that that was 58% uh, CBD, 3% THC, 2.9% CBG, and uh, surprisingly, 7% CBC, which is very good for the brain. I was taking that oil for over a year, and I actually had hope for uh, full recovery. I was able to start, I was no longer bedridden, I was able to get out, I was driving, you know, I comfortably, I did not have... Uh, TIAs, uh, which are like mini strokes. The tremors in my left hand subsided. The headaches diminished. And uh, I was able to start enjoying life. Did your doctors know that you were taking CBD? Yes. And they were fine with it? Yes. In fact, my family practitioner uh, encouraged it. He likes the fact that because uh, I don't take the opiates. Um, I had uh, hepatitis C over 10 years ago and I was using cannabis THC oil and effectively and that's why I'm not too hip on taking the opiates Mm -hmm. and surprisingly I no longer need a liver transplant so after over a year of doing this uh, September of 2016 I got pulled over I did a uh, five mile bridge walk across the Mackinac Bridge just to see if I was physically able to do that which I did just fine and on the way home, I got pulled over, and I had cannabis oil on me. The officer didn't arrest me. He just confiscated it, and uh, then they put a warrant out for my arrest uh, and charged me for violating the Controlled Substance Act. And uh, in October of 2016, uh, one of the bond, stipulation, the, the bond stipulation states that I can no longer have anything to do with cannabis or can I take the cannabis oil for my treatment and so forth. That was a very difficult six months you know you have to choose between life or complying with the law i mean do you are you do you choose to be legally alive or legally dead and i did my best to comply with this and in uh, about three weeks ago i had an angiogram because uh the previous mri the, the neurosurgeon was concerned about blood flow 
and the angiogram proved that there's no longer blood flow to the left artery. My, 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 my. Your brain. Thank you. Yeah. So you were taking the oil up until Octo- uh, September or October, and as a result of taking the CBD, CBD oil, you were doing fine. Then you stopped taking it because of the bond stipulations, and as a result of that, your health has deteriorated. Do I have that right? Yeah, I was subject to drug testing. And uh, trust me, the food in jail is not very good, so I didn't really, I, you know, I, I didn't want that option. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I truly believe that by complying with this uh, bond stipulation, it had a a negative impact on my health because uh, I started experiencing more headaches, sometimes more migraines. The tremors in my left hand increased, memory deficiency, loss of thought, and overall quality of life was diminished. And that was confirmed with this latest angiogram. I have a hearing here, June 14th, asking the judge to reconsider um, this bond stipulation so I could try to improve, you know, resume the treatment that was showing to have great promise. What Uh, what does your doctor say about this, John? Well, my doctor says uh, he uh, encourages, he does not understand why there is... There, there is no reason to deny me this course of treatment because, you know, studies have shown that the CBD oil is very effective in traumatic brain injuries. And when you have a brain aneurysm rupture, that qualifies as a brain aneur- uh, a traumatic brain injury. Dr. Melamed, I don't know if you know Dr. Melamed. Yes. Uh, I would say he's probably one of the leading experts in the United States in regards to the endocannabinoid system and medical marijuana. Uh, He's taught the first college course in regards to that. His assessment concurs that he believes that the result of uh, me not uh, taking the CBD oil resulted in the failure of my left artery. And he explains very well in depth why cannabis works well you know i'm i'm on the the breeding end of you know growing end of you know the end of it and creating strains like the catatonic four we distributed and uh producing strain or producing cannabis oil for cancer patients and learning from that you know that um, dr melamine is the one that has the is very versed in uh explaining the scientific scientific data behind it yeah he's the science guy we've we've interviewed him He's an amazing, amazing individual. So, John, if you were back on CBD, is the hope that the blood flow would pick up to your brain again? Yeah, the, the hope would be that the, that the left artery would, 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 would uh, pick up the blow, flow again. If not, we have something called the circle of Willis. I mean, what ha- has happened is the right artery started compensating, and it's a circle of Willis. And how effective it is allowing blood flow to the left side of the brain compared to the left artery being fully functional is undetermined. I can tell you it's not as sufficient as it was before. Okay, so it's a direct result of not having had CBD. I truly believe that. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, so like, it wasn't like this before you stopped using CBD. Correct. I mean... Prior to this, I mean, I did it for a year, and it showed that, uh, I mean, June, May, June of 2016, it showed everything was flowing just fine. And I was, like I said, I was uh, back out hiking. I was, I resumed uh, taking care of myself, um, even driving, you know. Um, and I, I used to call them brain zaps. I, I never, didn't, didn't experience those anymore. Um, I didn't have the tremors in my hand, and uh, like I said, I was I was resuming. I had full hope for full recovery here. So, as you were going along, you thought after your aneurysm, you're taking the CPD that uh, life was getting better. 
your health was getting better, you were improving, and things were starting to function normally. Then when you stopped the CBD, how soon did you notice that things were starting to deteriorate again? Um, it's very difficult to say because it's, you don't know this immediately, but I would say right when my headache started coming back more frequently. I mean, that was the first sign of it. Then uh, when I started getting in stressful situations, my tremors started controlling, uh, coming on more frequently. Um, with, within a month and a half, basically, I noticed it. You know, one of the things that I found quite remarkable in looking up brain aneurysms, because I knew nothing about brain aneurysms, but one in 50 people has a brain aneurysm, and every 18 minutes, at least in the United States, a brain aneurysm ruptures. Uh -huh. And I just found that to be quite remarkable. And you said that when it happened, when you were in the restaurant, you just had this excruciating pain. Is that right? Uh, basically, it was a headache. It was first, like I said, oh man, I got a migraine coming on. You know, I, I could feel it. Unlike um, different migraines, where it's just, you know, you also notice the pain. This one, it was like a snap. And it was instantaneous, you could feel it. Um, and it, it didn't go away. I, it, it took me, after a week of the constant migraine that, that ensued, uh, that's when I went to the hospital and they discovered that the fact that I had a, a, a rupture and they sent me by ambulance down to U of M. When they found out you had a brain aneurysm, what did you, your doctor, I mean, you have a very progressive doctor who recommends CBD. What did your doctor say about your long-term prognosis? They both told me that this is, when it comes to brain traumatic injuries, there's a lot that they don't know about. Uh, they do know that some things will clear up in time, others may not. So they couldn't give me any definitive answers how long I'd be experiencing headaches for, what kind of neurological disorders I should expect, because they don't have a clear picture on how the blood flows throughout the the brain, okay, and how it reacts. I mean, they, they yes, they can stop the damage and repair it to some degree, but they can't definitively tell you what disabilities that you may encounter, you know, because they do vary. Uh, but headaches is, is probably the number one. John, do you find that it is more difficult for you to communicate verbally without taking CBD than it was when you were taking CBD? Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, prior to this, like I said, I was the founder of the Cannabis Cancer Project. Uh, what we did for eight years is we gave uh, oil extract demos. I spoke publicly uh, to a lot of people. And we were known for we're, we're known for helping hundreds of people uh, in regards to cannabis oil throughout the years. And I haven't spoke I haven't spoken publicly since I've been asked to. But is it just the fact that you when you're up there you may be at a loss to kind of find your words? Yeah, loss of finding words, also memory. I was at the High Times Cannabis Cup. Uh, we've been, uh, we've, I've been offered a free booth there for the last few years. And two years ago, um, within s it was like six months of the surgery, I was at the Han Times Can Cannabis Cup, and I, I, I think I, I must have about seventy people come up and thank. Uh, us for what we do, whether it was providing oil to a cancer patient or teaching someone to how to make the oil. And I used to pride myself on never forgetting a face. I was never good on names, but I, I would never forget a face. And I was taking it miss. I couldn't remember a single one. That one really blew my mind. Um, I have gaps in my memory, missing like missing pieces of a puzzle. I do have short-term memory issues, like I forgot all about today's show, <laughs> you know. 
um, it does make life difficult sometimes. Uh, I can imagine. We're going to try and not take that too personally, John. <laughs> you know, John, just um, listening to you talk, you and I have spoken a few on a few occasions, and I notice the difference in you. You mean good or bad? Bad. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that you've deteriorated. Yeah, we've we've worked together and helped. Uh, you know, you, you've, Corey, you've always been on the side of the patients and trying to trying to offer them any help that they can, because as we all know, you know, there's a lot of things coming out in regards to the cannabis oil, whether it be THC or CBD. I mean, I have yet to find a cannabinoid I don't like. Yeah. Uh, and we know the answers that can help and benefit people, but obtaining the oil is another thing. It's not an easy thing to obtain. No, and I, I find, I can't imagine how you feel, because I'm feeling really frustrated listening to you speak and knowing what a difference you having access to your CBD could make. This is true. I mean, and this is why I'm thankful for people that in the, the other activists, I should say, out there um, who are helping me uh, to make sure that I can obtain this. And uh, I mean, that's why we became members of the Oklahoma Native American Church because the Oklahoma Native American Church won the right in 2005 to possess and use peyote and even exchange uh, within their members. That, too, is a class one substance. Uh, a lot of people don't know that peyote is actually used uh, for treating bipolar and schizophrenic issues. One of the things that is I, I find just so baffling about our political system and our medical system around the world is that you would be allowed to take toxic pharmaceutical medications that could do you harm. I'm talking about opioids. But here we have a non-toxic, natural plant derivative cbd that you could be taking which does you does your body good as they say and uh you're not allowed to take it and you're charged and you have to go to court i mean yeah, what, it's insane what really surprises me is the fact that we as americans you know who have this constitution to, that protects our rights to life liberty and pursuit of happiness cannot have the freedom of choice when it comes to our health and how we want to treat it. And the thing, too, I think we need to be clear about here is, if I understand correctly, you were, you were completely legal, correct, as far as being able to use CBD? Well, let me back up here. I mean, yes, Michigan is a medical marijuana state. Okay. I've, been, uh, I've had a doctor give me a recommendation for the last eight years. Up until two years ago, I used to have a medical marijuana card issued by the state. I paid the state. But I've also been raided three times and robbed of everything I own. Twice, never charged. And when I was charged, I could not even argue Section 8 of the medical marijuana defense. They wouldn't even allow the cancer patients to testify. So I found the card to be very useless. Um, this is why... I'm fighting this under our constitutional right because we have a freedom of religion. I mean, when it comes to our health and what we geez, uh, choose to believe in, because I truly believe that God put everything on this earth, and it says so in the Bible, all of, all of the seed-bearing plants are good and food for man, that everything that is on this earth is for our health. Um, and it's far superior than the pharmaceuticals, which we're finding out. And... This is why we joined the church, and it is about our belief in plant-based medicines. So, John, what happens when you go to court in June? Well, in June, June fourteenth, I have one. I have. They're only hearing one motion. I filed several. Uh, I filed the uh, challenging jurisdiction because we are registered as a church here with the state, we're recognized as a church. Um, so I'm fighting on the on the First Amendment. I mean, my God, 
There's no victim, no crime. Who's hurt by someone trying to treat themselves or a terminal cancer patient with cannabis oil? You know, their answer is society. I would like society to come out of the stand so I can face my accusers. When we look at our court systems, especially the lower courts, it's not about truth or justice. I mean, it's all about plea bargains. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's insane. It's, you know, um, you know, we have to argue this all the way up to the Supreme Court like they did with peyote. This is why we're fighting this issue underneath the, under the church because <sighs> cannabis, which has been used as a sacrament for thousands of years, whether it's for spiritual healing or physical healing, is no different than peyote. In fact, uh, a lot milder. Mm. So, John, what happens in June when you go to court if you lose? What are you going to do? If I lose, all I'm doing uh, in June 14th is just a motion to have them reconsider and lift the bond restrictions to allow me to use the CBD. Okay. Um, this is why I would like to, you know, you know, ask anybody who's an activist out there and is concerned about this issue to write a letter to the judge to let him know he's being watched. People are paying attention because we shouldn't have to, as a people in our society, to have to choose to be illegally alive versus legally dead. You know, um, I mean, it's rather disgusting because. I find it very disheartening. Every time I've been raided or had an encounter with law enforcement where I had to quit what I'm doing, somebody dies. You know, I mean, we had a 12 year old uh, that we were providing for and I couldn't get the oil to them. He had brain cancer. He died two months ago, uh, three months ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. and, you know, when are the courts going to stop killing people because the judge, the prosecutor, the courts, or the law itself are not qualified to make medical decisions or interfere with those who are qualified to make those decisions? How many patients do you figure you've helped, John? We used to keep track when I think that was about five, six years ago, but... That was, uh, we figured that after the second raid, that was only evidence <laughs> um, used against us. Right. Uh, so we stopped keeping track, and I was talking to Gersh, who was the other, Gersh Avery, who was the other co-founder, and we know it's well over 100. Oh. I just can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Um, so... If people want to help you, they don't necessarily have to be a way out there activist, do they? They can just be, if somebody's listening to this and it's hitting them in the heart and they want to try and help you, what can they do? Well, they can write a letter to the judge, you know, okay. you know telling them how they feel. Do, uh, do you have a contact address that they, that yes, they can do that? Here. Yeah, the contact address is Delta County Building, 310 Ludington Street, L-U-D-I-N-G-T-O-N Street, Escanaba, E-S-C-A-N-A-B-A, -A -A, Michigan, 49829. Address it to the Honorable John B. Econopolis, uh, I'll spell that, E-C-O-N-O-M-O-P-O-U-L-O-S, Circuit Judge. Okay. Case number 16-F-H-9-4-3-1. Okay. Now, I mean, this is, this is about the truth. You know, I'm not denying the fact of what I do, but... The people need to hear the truth. They need to hear the truth, and I think you should be able to have access to medicine that helps you. And that's what we've been we've been proving. I've proved, and I've I've spent the last eight years proving that with 
with cancer patients. I don't know if you know Alyssa Irwin. Yeah. Uh, well, that was one of my first patients. One of not my first patients. But that was I was the one that provided oil to her. And taught the parents how to do oil. So, for people who don't know, Alyssa Irwin is a high-profile case in the states. A young woman who had a brain tumor and uh, is cancer-free now. So, John, if if the judge does not lift your bond restriction, what do you do next? Well. I have to run the course of other motions. I'm praying that the fact that, you know, I have to love each day making that choice. Do I violate the court restriction? Uh, you know, do they drug test me? Do they put me in jail? Um, I have other motions that need to be filed in regards to our constitutional right. Uh, because the Controlled Substance Act is clearly unconstitutional. And I don't know when you, but I don't expect to win in the lower courts because they're uh, they're only geared for one thing, and that's for convictions. I do plan to appeal everything, and hopefully, you know. But this takes years. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping that during this time, while this is settled throughout the court and t- even taken to the Supreme Court, that I will be allowed to use the medicine. If I'm not, that's where I live in fear. John, have you ever thought of, if you lose this, of possibly moving to Colorado or something? I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. I mean, you're asking me, I do I live, do leave my children? Do I leave the things I love here in Michigan? Mm-hmm. Uh, live my life as a fugitive? The big step. I think I've been living as a fugitive the last eight years, you know. So I've never really thought of it to to that extent. No. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's that's fair enough. John, anything you want to say in conclusion? Um, in conclusion, <laughs> you know, it's time society wakes up. I mean, we have probably the most beneficial plant out there for mankind in regards to health. And it's never caused one overdose. No one's died from it. I mean, when are we going to end the insanity? You know, we've all seen the videos out there how this effective this is on Parkinson's disease. This explains why it controls the tremors. We should be embracing this, not putting people in jail for it. Great. Thank you, John. Appreciate your time, and good luck next month. Thank you. Thanks so much, John. Okay, thank you. And there you have it, another edition of Cannabis Health Radio. If you'd like to tell your story about the medical use of cannabis and how it has benefited you and your health or the health of a loved one, send us an email at info at CannabisHealthRadio.com. Just give us a little bit of background on uh, your taking of cannabis and how it's helped you, and we'll be in contact with you. Wherever you are in the world, thanks very much for listening. You've been listening to the Cannabis Health Radio podcast. Visit our website, CannabisHealthRadio.com, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. 